William Pritchard, aviation machinist, makes second class. And we had about just, just two or three weeks before we, maybe a month, something like that, before we left them for the med cruise on the Kennedy. I think it was March, sometime in there. And I got to go back down to Jet Shop for a short time again <laughs> when they came back. But, uh, and I went back to Squadron right before they left again. And we flew up to Norfolk and got aboard the Kennedy with our sea bags and everything else in because we were going to be gone for nine months, almost nine months. But uh, some memorable things about that cruise was uh, I did get to work in the jet shop for that whole time. We were at sea. And uh, I was, like I say, I was second class by that time. So they gave me a crew of people to uh, oversee back there. And one of our jobs was to put engines on the test stand. Then we had to, and usually I was the man that checked them out while they were running on days to make sure there wasn't any leaks or anything leaking or anything wrong and set the uh, fuel control or the amp meter or whatever had to be, uh, torque amplifiers and the like had to be set while they were running. But one time during the summer there, I remember we had turned up a uh, J79 back there on the test stand and you had the sound panel phones on while it was at idle, looking for leaks and everything, communicating with the control room. We usually had the first class or the chief on the throttle in there. And uh, this one time, I couldn't hear it, but they made an announcement over the uh, system that they were going to be a vigilante, make a low le flight deck level pass. But I was, went back and put my phones away in the box before we went on up with the engine. That's when he made his pass. <laughs> and I didn't know it. And I had my back to that engine. And I was, when, I, when that boom happened, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> That, I told them it took about 10 years off my life, I think, then. Because <laughs> I was afraid something happened to that engine. Nothing had, but, you know, here I am about froze. <laughs> just looking around. <laughs> I put my Mickey Mouse ears on. <clears throat> you know, I could see the vigilante going off in the distance, you know, when I turned around. And, of course, he was one of them that was in my squad. <laughs> that did that. But uh, that's something that happened to me I'll never forget. <laughs> and uh, also remember the parties they had when they pulled into Cannes, Cannes, France for the film festival. Had a big party aboard the Kennedy there. Uh, for some of the Kennedys came aboard and Sergeant Survivor, Gregory Peck was there. And uh, we had a real good CO at the time. He told us we was all invited to us. We had to wear our dress whites and behave ourselves or the worst would happen. So <laughs> we knew what he was talking about. He was very fair with everyone. Now, if you got in trouble, you were in trouble. But uh, he, he said, I'll be fair with everyone, and he was. And uh, later that cruise, he made Admiral, in fact. And we got a new skipper but at the last part of that cruise. But then uh, during that cruise, I was asked for uh, if I wanted to go to shore duty, but I had to extend when we got back. And they were, Navy at the time, decided they had too many people and they were given early outs and there were some problems at home and the like they were coming up. My wife was writing to me all the time. And I decided it'd be best if I went back home. So I said, I'd just take one of those early outs. And they said, we'll have your papers ready when we get back to Norfolk. So uh, when we got back, it was December 22nd, 1969. Uh, we unloaded the ship. And the next day, 
my separation papers ready. I had my DD-214. Flew back to Cincinnati. My mom and dad. Sorry. Wife were there to meet me. And uh, my wife, uh, still with her. It'll be 49 years we've been married. The last this month, September 30th. And uh, really, that's about it. I'm skipping some of the bad stuff because <laughs> we all don't need to know about that. So that happened. So board to flight deck and everything. When my mother had saw a big ad in the Cincinnati paper about GE, who made the jet engines, hiring, and she wrote them for an application for me and then sent it to me aboard the Kennedy and I filled out that application and sent it in to them and so after I got out I had another job for a while they called me for a job down at GE and I eventually made a career there of 36 years it took me a few years before I could go to engines working on engines but uh, the fact the first unit they sent me to when I was first hired into GE the first day they sent me to this place and they were painting Sermatel on J79 parts and I told the foreman I said well those are J79 compressor blades <laughs> and there's the cases by over there you're painting and he looked at me and said how did you know that I said I used to work on that so <laughs> I can say I uh, wouldn't I'd do it all over again if I was younger, but you know, at this age and age, it's impossible. But uh, later on, I went to got to go to the engine assembly when I first did my first interview for engine assembly. Uh, the interviewer asked me, he said, "It was like I had about seven years in the GE then. What qualifies for this job?" I said, "I was a J79 mech in the Navy." He says, "You're hard." So it all paid off in the end, and. Uh, I'm uh, really glad I joined the Navy.